Nintendo 64 was a console that pretty much lasted a great deal in my childhood. And as additional games came out, the sense of mystery and wonder only grew. As a reminder, this was during a time where answers couldn't readily be found online. And more so, not every kid had access to the internet. So we only had our own in-game exploration to go off of. But I think that's what made it feel awesome, too. Looking back now, the memories feel just as strong as they did back then. I digress though. Let's take a look at six more perplexing things from the Nintendo 64. As I mentioned in my previous videos, Hyrule was my biggest digital stomping ground outside of the lands of Super Mario 64. My brothers and I covered every inch of its land, trying to add more life to a game we thought we may have missed things in. Tons of rumors circulated around the land of Ocarina of Time, but one peculiar one was the path that was behind Ganon's castle. If you look at Ganondorf's castle from the front, you'll see a small section of land that wraps around to the left and right. This area is walkable, so you can explore it with Link. However, while the path ends on the left, it continues to wrap around on the right. As kids, we truly wanted to see what was back there. Since there were a variety of entrances and exits we could explore while the castle was collapsing, some of us believe that there may be a back entrance to the castle behind everything. If you clipped your camera through the walls of the castle, you could see just how far back the path went. Of course, trying to jump to the next installment of the path was an impossible task. We would try bomb jumping, side hop swinging, and plenty of other things to get around, but to no avail. However, one thing that piqued our interest was that for some reason, one wall of Ganon's castle was hookshotable. It was the rightmost side of the pillar next to the door. If you aimed your hookshot high enough, you could grab the top of the wall and fall behind the initial wall of the castle onto a small outcrop of land. This was kind of a secret hideout, and the land actually went back farther than you would think. This allowed us to see the back of the castle more clearly, and although it didn't let us continue to explore, we could actually debunk a fellow mystery through this. From this land, you could actually jump into the direct center of the lava beneath Ganon's castle, which some people always rumored would take you to some random place, whether it be the Sky Temple, Temple of Light, etc. This was one of the ways to do it, without actually hacking or altering the game's code. So as a kid, it was pretty monumental, although the only thing it did was put a rumor to rest. One of my favorite levels in Super Mario 64 was Jolly Rogers Bay. It was so majestic. I chilled this level for hours just listening to its amazing song. But there was of course one mystery that perplexed me about this stage. The tunnel where the eel resided. Now as I've discussed in previous videos, doors that don't open or tunnels that have no warp in them will drive any child insane. This tunnel was no different. With all the interesting warps across the game, like Hazy Maze Cave's transition to the waterfall, or Dire Dire Doc's transition outside the castle. My mind as a kid always wanted to know if I could get beyond this barrier to warp somewhere else in the castle. Of course, I could never get inside. But years later, I was racked with a new question. If the worlds of Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong were connected, which if you haven't watched my old theory video on it, I highly recommend checking it out. That means Mario and Banjo's world were intertwined. So what did a kid obsessed with video game worlds hypothesize? That Banjo-Tooie's Jolly Roger Lagoon and Jolly Rogers Bay were connected. That beyond that tunnel was the bay in theory. My imagination, of course, often got the best of me when I was younger. Okay, this one in particular I feel a lot of people had trouble with. With the launch of Yoshi's Story, many of us sought out trying to get all the Yoshis we could within the game. Of course, the black and white Yoshis could be unlocked throughout the game. But the biggest problem is that most of us thought there was a purple Yoshi as well. The reason we thought this was because the opening cutscene to the game showed a purple Yoshi multiple times. The promotion material for the game also showed one. So what did we do? We of course turned the game upside down and tried to collect every possible thing in it. We looked for secret areas we may have missed and tried bizarre combinations of things to try to uncover it. Without owning the strategy guide or having an accurate resource online, we spent our time just wandering through these cartoony lands, hoping to find some clue that would lead us to the Yoshi. Years later, we would realize that the Yoshi was actually removed from the game. Despite showing up multiple times in media, the purple Yoshi would live on in our hearts though, and eventually Smash Bros, of course.
Similar to our Purple Yoshi friend, we had another case of a missing character. In Mario Kart 64, it was debated for the longest time whether unlockable characters actually existed, since there was a form of unlockables within the game, like the mirror mode. It made people wonder if there was more beyond this. The problem was that in early screenshots and clips of the game pre-release, Magic Koopa was visible. He had his own graphics and everything, so people took to the tracks trying to figure out ways to unlock him. Some people claimed you had to finish all the races insanely fast, while others claimed that he was to be somehow unlocked through mirror mode. Again, this was a case of kids being baited by a beta screenshot, and not realizing that things could change in the final build of the game. Magic Koopa and Purple Yoshi were impossible goals fueled by something that seemed more logical to chase after than your typical rumor. To some of us, it felt like a bait and switch, although it was simply because we didn't understand what had actually changed the developmental side at the time. Fungi Forest was a place that I absolutely loved as a kid. The music was so calming and inviting. However, there were several things about this level that bothered me, because I couldn't find answers to them. The most notable one for me was actually outside the level itself. In the Fungi Forest Hub World entrance area, there are several wooden doors scattered around the room. You could open majority of the doors in the room to reveal a banana fairy, and a pad for Chunky Kong. However, one of these doors actually couldn't be opened at all. Based on the methods of opening the previous two doors, one would believe that the third door would actually hold something super substantial. But despite any effort in opening it, the door remained closed. To make things even more bothersome, there is a small area behind it. It isn't just a texture paint on a wall. Because of this, there was no way to tell if this was actually a warp to another area, or if something was to spawn within once the door was opened. However, there was no way to actually open the door at all. I have no idea why I was included, but it certainly taunted us for the longest time. Space Station Silicon Valley was a game I cherished as a kid, but I suppose it wasn't quite as popular as I thought it was. I absolutely loved the idea of a space ecosystem that harbored all the different environments of our world, and I spent tons of time just messing around with the in-game physics in each area. However, the Nintendo 64 completionist in me was certainly confused at this game. There was actually no way to get your file to 100%, because one of the items you needed to collect to do so actually wasn't collectible. It was a golden faucet, and when it was spawned, your character would walk right through it. Every other collectible in the game could easily be grabbed, but this one was different. So instead of rationalizing that it was a glitch at first, my head spun with theories. Did I have to collect it in a certain way? Was there something in the level I had to do prior to actually collecting it? Of course, there wasn't. Somehow the game launched with this game-breaking bug present. Worst off was that there was a secret level that you could unlock if you got 100%, but without cheats, you'd never be able to do it the natural way. This golden faucet was the bane of many players, myself included. I'll never forget all the time I wasted on this particular level. But now that I dumped these mysteries and rumors on all of you, I'd love to hear about your own experiences. I still have a couple mysteries I want to cover, and I have a few I still need to remember as well. One in particular being in Space Station Silicon Valley again. But anyways, were there any rumors you pursued as a kid? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Relish in those Nintendo 64 memories, folks. And never forget the time we spent exploring these digital worlds. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this N64 venture. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now to do so. Anyways, thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.